beautiful people and welcome back to my channel if you're new here welcome my name is Anava and I make faith related and medical related videos as you can tell from the title of today's video I'm going to be talking about the procedure of getting licensure for a medical doctor here in Zambia fresh from medical school if that is something that you're interested in then please do stick around without wasting any more time let's go straight into the video specific disclaimers first one is that this procedure that i'm going to explain in this video is the one that i went through which is specifically for foreign trained students that are coming back to practice within zambia um it it might be not it might be it is different for locally trained students i believe locally trained students the people that go to apex unza cbu and local trained medical schools um Lugoshi, they don't write a licensing exam I could be wrong if I am wrong and you know the procedure for local trained please do put it down in the comment section below because someone could benefit from that but from my knowledge um, they, they never used to write any licensing exam and then the second disclaimer that I have is that I did this procedure in 2019 which is about two years ago actually more than two years ago it's been such a long time so it might have changed or it might have tweaked at one point or maybe um, there might have been some changes in prices that I'm not aware about. Um, I am just sharing what I did, but I have spoken to people that are currently doing the procedure right now and they have confirmed that some things are pretty much the same. So majority of what I'm going to talk about in this video is going to be pretty much the same, but um, maybe there might be some differences here and there. And if you have noticed, if you do notice a difference that you know about, please do comment in the comment section below and let other people know. One more thing, make sure to stay until the end of the video because I'm going to be giving some tips that I have for you if you're in the licensing um, period of your medical career as you're waiting to be officially had. I'm going to be giving some tips for you for the whole procedure because I know it's a very long, stressful procedure, so do stick around for that. All right, so the first thing that you're going to do when you come back from medical school, you've arrived in Zambia, you have your papers and everything. The first thing that you're going to do is you're going to go to Zaka, which is Zambia Qualification Authorities. You're going to take your paperwork there for your um, qualifications to be authorized by the Zambian institutions. So um, that, I believe, is about 1,350 kwacha. You will take your qualifications and your NRC, I believe, and submit them and make the payment. And then that procedure takes about, I think I'd like to say three days to two weeks, depending on how backlogged they are, number one, and also depending on how soon your school responds. Because what they do is they get those qualifications and then they contact your school in whichever country you're coming from and they give the approval and then your staff is authorized. So if your school takes long, I know someone who had to wait for about three, four months because her school was delaying, but mine took, I think about, I think about almost two weeks. That's how long mine took. But I know there are some people who get theirs done faster. Um, of course, if your school is much more responsive, has a quicker response rate, but then that is the range in which that stuff is going to be done. Uh, what you can do is maybe have someone back in the country where you studied who's like pushing for you or speaking to someone at the school for you. But then yeah, that is the first thing that you're going to do. The second thing is you're going to take your grade 12 certificate, your NRC, your qualifications from your school, your authorization letter from Zaka, and your transcript and take those things to HPCZ and they will give you a letter that is going to be addressed to the university levy um, when I was saying university where they do the licensing examination they'll give you that letter and so when you submit that and you get the letter from HPCZ I believe that just takes a few days um, there are no payments to be made you take that to levy Mwanawasa University which is a third step levy Mwanawasa University you take the letter from HPCZ and you book for your exam last I heard the cost of the exam was eight 800 kwacha um, that I don't know if that is the same for Zambian and non-Zambian I'm not sure about that one but the cost of the exam was 800 kwacha so that is paid to the account Levin Mwanawasa University account you don't pay in cash I'm going to leave the information in the description bar below of someone that you can contact or rather the payment procedure of Levin Mwanawasa the account details and everything but that is paid to their account um, once it's that is paid into the account, you keep the proof of payment because that is what you're going to need on the exam day. When you've taken the letter from HPCZ to Levin Wanawasa University, you are going to be told to choose a day. If the 
are really really booked they will choose one automatically for you but if they have a lot of openings they actually can ask you to choose your own day which i did choose my own day and i know many people have chosen their own day so just make sure that you choose a day with that you're comfortable with a day that you believe you have studied enough and you have a lot of clinical practice don't try and make it too soon but again don't be too fearful and make it too far just choose a day that is comfortable enough for you and um, prepare towards that so yeah you select your day that you want to write the exam i think you can book up to three months in advance if i'm not mistaken more than three months i don't think they do the booking you'll have to come back that that was the procedure back in 2019 i don't know about now so yeah you make a booking at hpcz and then you prepare for your exam preparations for your exam I would highly advise that even before you start the procedure of booking for your exam and HPCZ, do clinical rotations. If you haven't done them in medical school or you've only done them in the country where you studied, come back and do clinical rotations in a Zambian hospital for at least six months to one year in all the departments. And then when you're comfortable enough with your clinical rotations, then you can go and book. Because I really recommend that the time when you book for your exam, you base that time from the time you book to your exam you base that time to strictly study theology theological study meaning your textbooks just study as much as possible um if time is not your friend or you have certain issues or certain circumstances where you have to do both clinical um doing your rotations and studying at the same time then trying to balance it out and make it work for you but i really advise that you do your clinical first and then you book and then you do your studying of course your clinical comes with studying please do not do clinicals without studying but i mean like just have a dedicated period of studying for your exam one thing i want to add is the exam is carried out twice a week i think the time when i was writing it used to be tuesdays and thursdays or was it wednesday and friday i i can't remember but it's carried out twice a week so they only book on two days of the week and they take a specific number of people that they book the time when i was writing i think it was 20 people per exam day so that is those are the certain things that influence the day that you're going to write the exam if they are thoroughly booked if they'll just choose a day for you and squeeze you in wherever possible but just keep that in mind that the exam is just two times in one week so on the day of the exam you're going to arrive at Levin Wanawasa University and you're going to you have to arrive with your NRC your transcript from school your academic qualifications that is your degree and everything your letter from HPCZ and proof of payment the receipt that you get from the bank once you deposit in the account you have to arrive with these five things show them and then you're going to be allowed to write the exam so when i wrote my exam it was written in one day both theory and um, practical the morning was theory i believe the exam was about three hours long if i'm not mistaken and it's just done just there in living one hours university there's a little section that they had cleared out for the exam for the exam procedure for licensing um, so we did it just from there and they just divided us in different rooms and we wrote I think it was three hours that we wrote that paper for and then we broke off we went for lunch at 12 and then at 14 hours we had to walk if you know Levin Wanawasa University you know that it is just behind Levin Wanawasa Hospital they're just right next to each other so after lunch we had to walk all the way up to Levin Wanawasa Hospital that's where our practical was from and for the practical we were just lined on a bench and they'd call us in one by one and when you enter you sit it's a viva you sit across the desk from um three to five doctors depending on the day and who's available three to five doctors and then they just start to ask you questions it's kind of like a conversation so if you do know your medical knowledge like it will just flow um just don't stress too much i think when you stress you tend to forget things but then just be calm be cool understand that you have studied enough you're deserving of this you're deserving of this and then just sit down and answer whatever it is that they're going to ask so they'll ask you like okay a patient comes in with um this 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 i can't even remember what my questions were i think all of the questions that i received was maybe i think malaria in 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 children in pediatrics no i think i had asthma and asthma attack in a pediatric patient like we'll just give you a clinical scenario like okay a woman comes in for example Obzangaini, she's a g2p1 at uh, 32 weeks and she comes in her bp is 180 over 113 uh what's the first thing that you're going to do 
and she'll be like oh, okay yeah i'm going to see the patient i'm going to ask for signs of blah 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 i'm going to do a urinalysis and i'm like okay fine you've done the urinalysis and you find that the urine is three plus what are you going to do okay i'm going to make a diagnosis of spe and then uh, like it's literally just it, you just conversate okay what drugs are you going to start the patient on okay i'm mifedipine i'm methaldopa i'm going to start on magnesium sulfate okay what's the dosage for magnesium sulfate how do you give magnesium sulfate like it's literally a conversation based on what you answer so they'll give you a scenario and then based on the direction that you're going um they'll just like, keep adding more stuff like i'm going to plan for early delivery for this patient because it's preeclampsia okay what if you deliver the patient what are the risk factors okay preeclampsia comes the risk factor of a placenta rupture which may result in pph like just just flow <laughs> just flow that's one thing i can advise i think when you're in that moment it's very scary but don't be intimidated there are some mean doctors i won't lie but don't be intimidated don't let that scare you don't let that phase you you are there you are qualified you finish medical school just flow and let it just come out naturally do study study so that when you flow you are flowing in sense <laughs> yeah um yeah that is really my advice for the exam so after the exam you're not wait for your results i think my results came out a few days after my exam i'll say like less than five days if I am not mistaken, I wrote my exam on a Tuesday and I heard the results were out on Friday. But then when the results come out, um, there are certain letters that they have to make that you go and pick up and then they forward some to HPCZ for HPCZ to keep as a record in your file. So that whole procedure is what takes long. So like I remember for me, I kept calling the lady, bless her heart, I'm sure she was so annoyed. But I kept calling her like, are the results out? Are the, are the results out? So she eventually said, yes, yes, the results are out and you have passed. And I was like, praise God. But um, I'm still doing the letters for HPCZ. So I think a week after I knew about my results, that's when I picked up my letter and it was ready. So you get your letter and then you take it to HPCZ. When you take the letter to HPCZ, you have to take the same, the same um, paperwork that you've been taking everywhere, your NRC, your qualifications, your ZACA um, authorization, qualification authorization, um, your transcript, your grade 12 certificate, like you have to take all of that and go to HPCZ and then apply for a license. And then when you apply for a license, I think you pay 2,400 together at once because you pay for the yearly practicing certificate and then you're going to pay for your internship certificate one which lasts two years so i think all at once it comes to 2400 to 2800 that's what you pay at hpcz and once you've made that payment of course you pay into the account once you've made that payment you take the proof of payment and then you wait for your license so the license can take anywhere from a few days to weeks it depends where you do it i know people in osaka when they were doing it they were waiting for i think two to three weeks for their licenses to come out because there's so many people that do it from there i did mine from indola at that time we were not in indola i got it the same day honestly like i got it the same day it was so i was so surprised because i went there with the expectation of it's going to come out after three weeks from what i was hearing from the people in lusaka but i got it within the same day and i was like okay thank you jesus and i still think it's faster when you do it from smaller hpcz offices i believe there's an office now in kasama or is it chipata i know there's an office somewhere up up there in zambia and then there's one here in um in dollar and then there's the main one in lusaka i think they have opened other ones around zambia but i'm just not 100 percent sure honestly but then if you're able to do it from a smaller office because things will work will happen faster because the lusaka one is the main one of course everyone goes there so that's why things are a little bit slower in that office you get your certificate you make photocopies and you get your nrc and then you have to write an application letter to ministry of health there are some circulating application letters of people that wrote to ministry of health i'm sure if you just ask in the medical community someone can send something to you but you can also just google just google a job application letter and just copy that exact um format and just write it one important point is that it has to be handwritten do not type it out i don't know why but they're very specific about that you have to actually write it out in your handwriting don't type it so once you have your application letter your nrc and your certificates from hpcz you take that to ministry of health and then you submit that and then um, i think you also have to do like passport size pictures and just small small things that you have to submit and then they'll open your file for you and then they're going to they're going to notify you when there's an opening a job opening um, yeah, so that is the procedure that from the time when you submit to Ministry of Health until you get hired, it can be 
it can be a while i won't lie <laughs> it can be a while i know people who waited for a year a year and a half um, i'm sure we're all familiar with the situation of being hired i'm sure we're if you're in the medical community or if you're just in zambia i'm sure you've heard of people that are waiting to be hired by the government but it can be a while for me i think i submitted in december and i got my letter in april so it was about four months but then the time when i got my letter it was because that was the peak of covid and then they were like hiring people for covid so that's i praise god that i got hired in that specific time frame so i think that's what kind of like um, made it a little bit faster but i know there are people who waited longer but there are people who haven't waited that long at all so don't take this as a negative thing like it's just uh undetermined it can be short it can be long but then that is the period that you're going to wait you're going to wait just make sure that you are constantly checking up on it maybe you are dropping by once in a while you're making phone calls um yeah but basically yeah that is the whole procedure from start to finish of how you're going to get your license this was a very highly requested video and i'm so happy that i finally did it um, i'm not going to give you guys 10 tips that i have for the whole procedure um, from start to finish the first tip that i have is that you have to be patient like it takes so long um, for everything to be done like if you add up the times that I've been talking about from the time that you just start from Zaka until you actually apply to Ministry of Health and get hired it takes really long it takes really really long and you have to be patient you can't expect things to happen in an instant and if you are short pressed um, you're limited you have to source as many people as you can to help you but then just try and be as patient as you can the second thing is be polite when you're interacting with these people remember they interact with so many um, medical students or um, graduated medical doctors graduated unemployed medical doctors they interact with so many people that are going through the same process and there's a lot that has to be done there's a lot of paperwork that has to be done and so if you go in there with an attitude and you're upset i understand it's frustrating sometimes but if you go in there with an attitude maybe you're upset and everything it kind of like demoralizes them to actually help you you know so just be polite be nice L literally you will meet nice people even at hpcz i have heard some people say oh they're mean they're rude whatever but when i was doing the procedure i met like the nicest people and maybe it's because i was being nice to them so i think you get what you give if you're going to show up with an attitude expectant of them to do this like be rude they are going to do that back to you but if you be polite and just be calm be cool and everything i think that is what you're going to receive of course there are like some here and there that you know um they are just maybe naturally like that but then just be polite like it will save you so much just be polite the third tip i have is be persistent because um especially in that in that period when you are waiting for ministry of health to get back to you be persistent like check up on them don't be that person who is there every day or every week at 7 a.m outside the office knocking on their don't be that person knocking on their door don't be that person but at least try and check in like maybe once every two weeks three weeks maybe once a month you show up you ask some questions like just be persistent and be present i understand that some people travel from um, different places for me i was like on the copper belt but i'd ask my sister to just check for me and ask some questions you know just here and there and just find out what is happening but just be persistent even with your degree your qualifications from zaka um your licensing just like check up here and there politely just ask what's happening so that you know because sometimes um documents get lost things go wrong and you find you have to start from the beginning and no one notified you so just really be persistent and check and follow up on your stuff okay the fourth tip is that you should always have passport size photos if possible before you start your procedure just take maybe 16 or 20 and just keep them in your file because you will need them at different places when you're submitting documents they, add for, they ask for passport size photos some ask for one some ask for two some ask for up to four so as you are going to different places you will need to um, submit passport size photos if that hasn't changed i hope it hasn't changed but just make sure that before you start your process take passport size photos and just keep them and then just be submitting wherever they are needed the fifth one is similar make sure you photocopy all your documents and if possible get them certified even before you start your procedure so have like maybe five or even seven photocopies of each document that is your nrc your transcript from school your um zaka the qualification letter that you're going to receive your 
degree like all your different documents that you just have just make sure you photocopy everything and just certify them because you are going to be submitting them again and again at different places and majority of those places will require them to be certified so it's better to just do it and get it out of the way get it out of the way and then just start submitting um, when you're certifying remember that you can't certify and then photocopy a certification it has to be freshly certified so make your photocopies and then certify those photocopies um, all at once and then just keep them for future reference trust me even if you don't choose everything just keep them because I know when I finish internship, when I'm starting my process of my permanent license, when I'm applying, whether I'm going for STP or I'm applying elsewhere, like whatever comes next, I know I'm going to need those documents. So just keep them. They will be useful in the future. My sixth tip is that you need to prepare to travel if you don't live in Lusaka. Even if you live in Lusaka, like you need to travel from Levin Wanawasa to HPCZ to so many different places to Zaka, like it's quite a distance between these places. So you will have to move up and down, just prepare yourself. But for people that are not from Lusaka, just prepare yourself that you will have to travel to Lusaka for certain things. For example, HPCZ is found in Ndola, but the exam is only written in Lusaka as of now, unless that has changed from that time. It's only written at Levin Wanawasa University. And so I have had to travel from the copper belt to Lusaka and stay in Lusaka for some days for this whole procedure and everything that I was doing. Um, if you can get some people to help you, get someone to help you, but I highly advise that you do it on your own unless something really, really limits you and you can't travel. I highly advise that you do it on your own because it's very um has a third person in between you and the institution it's very tricky on top of that if they're not medical staff they might not know certain things how certain things work there's some things that only you know even about your academic journey so um just make sure that you're doing it on your own if you can unless you are really short pressed and you need someone to help you if need be you have to travel from wherever in zambia that you are and maybe go to lusaka prepare for accommodation if you're going to stay there for like maybe three weeks a month just prepare to like reside there for a while or if you want to do up and down trips where you go in you sort something out you go back and then you wait until you're cold you go back whichever works for you but just prepare to travel as much as possible the seventh tip that i have is that keep all your documents together get a bag i had a bag um it's somewhere in one of my rooms. I still have it to this day. It's like an envelope, you know those envelope bags? And it has all my documents to this day, like all my documents, my grade 12 certificate, my transcript from medical school, my degree, my everything. Like it literally stays in that bag and they all stay together because I learned that with this whole procedure, I'm always up and down. I need to go pick up something from HPCZ. I need to go make a deposit at the bank. I need to go back to Levin when I was at university. Because of the constant movements, you're better off just having all your documents at hand in that specific thing so that if anything is needed, Needed. if you need a photocopy you just pull it out from there and just submit it in case something that i didn't mention in this video is required when you're applying make sure you have it with you so that you don't have to like now start looking for someone to certify your document looking for someone to photocopy your document like it's just really stressful and it just adds more weight and um, money spent to the procedure so just make sure you always have all your documents at hand in one specific envelope bag and you are just literally dishing out whenever you need them just dishing them out the eighth tip that i have is that you have to have emotional support because it's a very stressful event like I mentioned when you write your exam um, not everyone passes some people don't do well and unfortunately it's really really painful when you fail an exam when you are doing uh, licensing for HPCZ and it takes like two weeks or three weeks or four weeks or maybe your papers get lost and they send you back to Lusaka to start the process maybe you're applying for Ministry of Health and you're waiting for like four months six months eight months to be deployed like it's just very stressful it can break down even the strongest person and you need to have a good support system around you people that are able to encourage you and remind you and help you be patient help you keep your faith and believe that it is coming you need to have those types of people around you to help you on this journey or this point in your journey the ninth tip that i have is that you have to be financially ready i did mention the prices of certain things that you have to pay for um, the exam the zaka the hpcz i think i did with prices on those but just remember that there are a lot of hidden costs in um, the procedure that you're going to be doing like i said you need to photocopy all your documents and you need to have them certified and that's a hidden cost uh, depending on where you get it certified i think the cheapest i've ever seen certification at is 50 kwacha depending on where it is done but just find um someone who certifies 
price and the price range that is comfortable for you but then that is a hidden cost photocopying is a hidden cost transportation is a hidden cost if you're coming from outside and you don't have anywhere to stay maybe you don't have relatives a hotel is a hidden cost like there are so many hidden costs in the whole procedure so just prepare yourself financially you may be required to come back to Lusaka maybe there's something missing in your documents or they need you to sign papers or something and they call you last minute and say oh come to the office tomorrow and you're like okay I can come tomorrow but I'll come the day after because that day you're going to have to travel to Lusaka so just prepare financially for any abrupt things that may come up um, I can't give you a price to prepare because it depends on what you're looking at I would say maybe in 5,000 you can have everything done but I know there are some people who can really budget themselves and squeeze and spend way less than that and there are some people who spend way more than that depending on your situation and what you have going on the last tip that i have it wouldn't be my video if i didn't say this but just pray constantly pray without season pray 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 and pray and understand that this thing is yours the lord is fighting for you you have come this far and you will not fail you have come this far and he will see you through he's the one who brought you through medical school is the one who made you see and hold a certificate he's the one who made you start this process he will definitely see you through no matter how long it may seem like it is taking it will happen in his divine time all right people so that is the end of the video like i said it was highly requested and i hope you did enjoy it if you did please go ahead and give it a thumbs up share this video with someone who may need it i know there are many people who are graduating and coming back and they're in need of um, getting their licenses and starting to practice so i do hope that this video is something, is something that's going to help a lot of people do go ahead and share it wherever you can with so many different people thank you so much for watching my video if you have any other questions you can find me on instagram at anava.exo and you can just dm me over there and I'm going to answer whatever questions that you have once again thank you for watching bye